Allowing users to enter dates is as simple as binding an at state property storing a date to a date picker, all in Swift UI. But things get a little bit woollier afterwards. You see, working with dates is hard, like really hard, way harder than you think, way harder than I think, and I've been using dates for years. Let's start with a sim simple example, you can see what I mean. I'll say func example dates down here. And I'm gonna say now is date.now, the current date and time. I'll then say let tomorrow be date.now.adding time interval 86,400. That's how many seconds there are in the average day. And now our range becomes everything between now through to tomorrow. So we have the current time, we have the time tomorrow, plus a range of the two. And that might seem simple enough, but do all days actually have 86,400 seconds? If they did, a lot of people would be out of jobs, quite frankly, because think about daylight savings time. Sometimes clocks go forward, you lose an hour. Sometimes you go backwards, you gain an hour. Sometimes we have 23 or 25 hours in a day. Plus, there are leap seconds. We add a second or subtract a second from the clock so the clock stay in, in line with Earth's ever-changing rotation. If you think that's hard, what you want to do is open up your terminal app on your Mac and run the cal command. This prints the current calendar. Uh, now, if you run a particular month, a particular year, it'll tell you that. I can say, give me the calendar for September, the ninth month of 1752. And that's the calendar. You'll see we have Tuesday 1st, Wednesday 2nd, Thursday 14th, Friday 15th, and so forth. A whole bunch of days are missing because at that exact month and that exact year, we move from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar and had to catch up on all the missed dates it had in the wrong calendar for so long. The reason I'm telling you all this isn't to scare you off. Dates are inevitable in our programs after all. You will have to deal with them. Instead, I want you to understand that for anything significant, any use of dates that actually matters in your code, you want to rely on Apple's frameworks for all your calculations and your formatting. In this project, we're making use of dates in three ways. We're going to select a sensible wake-up time for users. We'll read the hour and minute they want to wake up and we'll show the suggested bedtime neatly formatted. We could, if we wanted, do all those three things by hand. But then you're into the realm of daylight savings time, leap seconds, Gregorian calendars, and more. Much better is to let iOS do all that work for us. It's less work for us, and it's guaranteed to be correct, regardless of the user's region settings. Let's tackle each of these individually starting with choosing a natural, sensible wake-up time. As you've seen, SwiftUI gives us a, oh, sorry, Swift gives us a sensible built-in date type for working with dates, and that encapsulates year and month, date, hour, minute, second, time zone, and more, all in one object. It's really, really nice. However, we don't want to think about that. We want to say, give me 8 a.m. wake-up, regardless of what day it is today. That's the plan. Now, Swift has a slightly different object type for that, called date components, where it can read or write specific parts of a date rather than the whole thing all at once. So, if you want to represent uh, 8 a.m. today, we would say make a new variable called components equal to a new empty date components, and then components.hour is 8, components.minute is 0. And then get a date object from that by saying calendar dot current dot date from those components. Now, because of the various difficulties around date calculation and date validation, this date from method actually returns an optional date. So it's a good idea to use nil coalescing to make sure if somehow that fails, shouldn't do in this case, but if it did fail, just give me back the current date. I'll just do question mark, question mark, dot now. The current date. That's the first challenge, getting 8 a.m. on any given date. 
The second challenge is to read how we could get the hour they want to wake up. Remember, date picker is bound to a date object giving lots of information. We want to find a way to just pull out the hour and minute from that whole information. And again, date components comes to the rescue. We can ask iOS to provide specific components from a date, then read those back out. There is one hiccup, which is the, the disconnect between the values we request and the values we get, thanks to the way date components works. Uh, the hour and minutes, we can be asking for them just fine, but we'll get back optional values. There might be an hour, there might be a minute. Now we know we asked for them, they're gonna be there, but we still have to unwrap the optionals or provide default values. And so we might say, I'll uh, comment this out for now. Let components be calendar.current.dateComponents. And here we can choose which components we actually want. I'm going to say I want .hour and .minute as this array here. It's actually a set behind the scenes, but we're specifying it as an array. From some date, I can say .now, for example, or a custom date. And then let hour be the components dot hour, no coalescing zero, and minute is components minute, no coalescing zero. The last challenge is how we can format dates and times. And here we have two options. First, we can rely on the format parameter that's worked so well in the past. We can ask for whichever parts of the date we want to show. For example, I could say, uh, up here in our view body, give me the text of date.now with a format of dot date time dot hour dot minute. And you'll see when it finishes loading on the preview on the right, hopefully. You can do it. There we go. 4.45 p.m. it's saying right now. Or if we want uh, day, month, and year, we could say date time dot day dot month dot year. And I've Oct 15, 2023. And you might wonder how that handles different date formats. For example, here in the UK, we use day slash month slash year sometimes, but other countries use month, day, year, or in Japan, they use year, month, day. It varies. Well, the magic is we don't actually have to care because we're saying, give me the day, give me the month, give me the year. We're asking for that data. We're not arranging that data. So iOS will automatically format the date differently based on the user's preferences. As an alternative, we can use the formatted method directly on dates, passing a custom configuration there. So we could say, oops, we could say, back in Xcode again, we could say, I want date.now.formatted with a date of dot long and time of dot shortened. Now get the date and time in one place. The point is that dates are hard, but Apple has provided us with stacks of helpers to make them less hard. If you learn to use this help as well, you'll write less code, but also better code too.